c'est quoi ce nom Now, unless we get started here, there'll be no arriving. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugata, nor of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. When the supreme among humans, you were born on this earth, you paced out seven strides and said, I am supreme in this world. To you who are wise in, I prostrate. With pure bodies, form supremely pure, wisdom ocean like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, winner of the best, Lord, to you I prostrate. With the supreme signs, face like the spotless moon, color like gold, to you I prostrate. You are immaculate, three worlds are not. Incomparably wise ones, to you I prostrate. The Savior having great compassion, the Founder having all understanding, the field of merit with qualities like a vast ocean, to you, the one gone to dustness, I prostrate. The purity which makes one free from attachments, the virtue which frees one from the lower realms, the one path, the sublime pure reality, 
so that the Adama which pacifies I prosper. For those who are liberated and who also show the path to liberation, the holy field qualified with realizations, who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you, the sublime community intending virtue, I prostrate. Do not commit any non-virtuous actions, perform only perfect virtuous actions, subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Buddha. A star, a mirage, a flame of a lamp, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, see condition things as such. Through these merits may sentient beings attain the rank of all seeing, subdue the flow of faults, and be delivered from some side of the ocean, perturbed by waves of aging, sickness, and death. <coughs> ジェンボサマジョバニラナパラタジンコンボマフォンデダラヤラシゲトンバルナンバルタオテネサゲゲトセダンデンバシャレフルタンジュセンボセンボジェンボパパチェレセワンジョセダララバレジャデゲジェ
At that time, the Blessed One was totally absorbed in the concentration that examines all phenomena called profound illuminations. And at the same time, the noble Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, was engaged in the profound practice of the wisdom gone beyond, enlightening the five aggregates by nature empty. Then, through the inspiration of the Buddha, the Venerable Chariputra spoke to the noble Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, How should those of good family learn who wish to follow the profound practice of the wisdom gone beyond? As he spoke in the noble Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva replied to the Venerable Shariputra, saying, O Shariputra, whatever son or daughter of good family wishes to follow the profound practice of the wisdom gone beyond, should look at it like this, analyzing the five aggregates by nature empty. Form is empty, emptiness is form, emptiness is no other than form, form is no other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, recognition, karmic formations, and consciousness are all empty. Therefore, Shariputra, all phenomena are empty without characteristics. They are unborn and unceasing. They are neither impure nor free from impurity. They neither decrease nor increase. Therefore, Shariputra, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no recognition, no karmic formations, no consciousness. There is no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind. There are no spheres of the eyes, up to no spheres of the mind, all the way up to the sphere of mental consciousness. There is no ignorance, nor is there destruction of ignorance. There are none of these all the way up to, there is no old age and death, nor is there destruction of old age and death. Thus there is no suffering, no cause of suffering, no cessation of suffering, and no path. There is no wisdom, no attainment, and no non-attainment. Therefore, Shariputra, because there is no attainment, all the bodhis have no hold of the wisdom of the No security of mind, they have no fear. Passing utterly beyond falsity, they reach beyond the bounds of sorrow. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times by relying on the wisdom gone beyond, fully and clearly awaken to unsurpassed, most perfect and complete enlightenment. Therefore, the wonder of the wisdom gone beyond, the wonder of great insight, the unequal and unsurpassed wonder, the wonder that comes all suffering should be known as the truth, for there is no deception. The wonder of the wisdom gone beyond is proclaimed. Oh, Shari Patra, this is how a Bodhisattva Mahasattva should learn the profound wisdom Gamya. And the Blessed One arose from that concentration and praised the noble love of Lokiteshvara. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva saying, Very good, very good, O son of good family. It is exactly like that. The profound wisdom Gamya should be in practice exactly as you have said. And then the Tathagat Goddess will rejoice. When the Blessed One had said this, the Venerable Shadipatra, the Noble Avadokiteshvara, the whole gathering in the world with its gods, men, their gods and spirits, their hearts full of joy, praise the words of the Blessed One. So is the Noble Discourse on the essence of the wisdom of Gamya. <laughs> あの、さあ、今が何ちゅうてんだ。何ちゅうもるてんだ。おうてちゃてよれちゃんだ。何ちゅうもるてんだ。さあ。あの、さあ、ちゃん。ちゅうすぎで。あ。こう。風に今度し
internal activities and external activities, the internal activities of the mind being principal, where there are as well external verbal and physical actions. And the series and steps involved in a practice concentrated especially upon the mind is involved in this introduction to the Buddha Dharma. Huh? Well, <laughs> Chao In the external physical and verbal activities, activities, dharmas, karmas, in these external physical and verbal activities, whatever they are, they're quantifiable. They are finite. They have their limits. Versus thoughts, mental activities, which have no limit, are not finite in that way, are not quantifiable, however much they are engaged, by that same degree they continue to increase. And there's no arrival at some boundary or limit, but there is such an arrival at a boundary or outer limit to physical and verbal activities. So the emphasis upon the mental component. In physical training, physical exercise, you engage in that exercise and see improvement and continued improvement up until a certain point after which there's no further improvement, no further physical development. Differently, in mental activities, it doesn't find a, an outer limit, but continues in its development. <laughs> Metanko <laughs> And when, when water is boiled, the boiling water gradually evaporates. The boiling of the water does not increase the amount of water boiling. Physical and verbal activities are like that. Whereas mental activities, whatever is processed mentally, whatever becomes mental conditioning and habituation, that only continues. But are there physical and verbal activities that do count as dharma, there certainly are, and there are 
certainly physical and verbal activities that are necessary practices in Dharma. Nevertheless, most physical and verbal activities are connected especially to our purposes in this lifetime alone. But mental thoughts and actions and practices, whatever they are, are especially connected with subsequent lives, especially in this way, for the connection to subsequent lives. Oh, yeah. That is the end. Marandola, we do kill her, Marin Satisfaction and dissatisfaction are of the kinds that have passed already, those that are processed in the present, and those yet to come. In every case, satisfaction and dissatisfaction is past occurring presently or to come. Those experiences which have passed, experiences of dissatisfaction and dissatisfaction are mere recollections and memories now such that we recall that at that point, I had a pleasant time. At that time, I did not. Beyond being recalled, they have already ceased. Oh, yeah. That and then I'm also with young Shimbe, but so what they do in your work? Oh, so what they do in your body? And then Mangchechi, Nargi Legi, Nargi Langi, that's some of the time down the Luma, Jebegi, Chetan, Tene, and then I'm that they do that joy you were chatting your resource. Presently experienced satisfaction and dissatisfaction are for the most part conditioned by past actions, physical and verbal, already occurred that are connected now to the experience of satisfaction and dissatisfaction presently. For those experiences to come satisfactory and dissatisfactory, for any adjustment that we would make, so any alteration that would be made to experiences which will be had, they involve adjustment, whereas the inevitability of pain and sorrow to come, where no adjustment is made because of the preponderance of karmas already existing. Oh, yeah. Past experiences now being passed involve for us no further correction, alteration. We have no power to make any change. Oh, yeah. Presently occurring experiences, satisfactory and dissatisfactory, do allow for very little change as they are a result of past accumulated karmas not allowing for very much alteration. Oh, yeah. 
Tienen nave tunger, tienen cave tunger, tienen cave tunger, tienen sitila, tan más que cantar, no me leguen, se puede trucar a Indy, se trague que va a estar aquí, once de yo mares. Presently occurring experience, for instance, painful experience. In painful experience is the worst pain being that of death, followed by sickness, aging, and birth. These four kinds of pain are conditioned already by and consequence of past karmas. As they are result of past karmas, they allow for very little change. Oh, yes. Unless one has advanced to heightened levels of practice, the present occurring experiences do not allow for very much alteration. Another matter, if one has gained an exceptional aptitude. Whereas experiences to come allow for significant alteration in their course, we have the capacity to alter the course. We are required, we have as our purpose the alteration of that course. Experiences to come. Satisfactory experiences to come, the elimination of painful experiences in the future. Both these, the achievement of satisfaction, the dispelling of pain, these we have as our purpose. We have the capacity to make such changes. We are able to make such changes. We must make such changes. For that reason, then we've gathered, we gathered in the gather in the exchange to instruct and to listen in order to bring about satisfaction. And eliminate pains. Boy, one of the music to the Chasha Vaina, what you'll be to do to catch your ticket of us, Jung Shimba, Jung Savale, Mombola, Jung Yurgi music to catch your one of the Jizo to dance and ticket of us. And in Tina Shing, one of the Bena Mizil Chasha, Susu, Nimani Mana Chasha Vaina, Bena Kesan, Kesan, one of the Kibu Tan Yore, Majiba Chung Yore. Taring and in ordinary lives, we prioritize especially experiences to come. They are seen as more important than experiences which have already passed in the sense that yesterday, as day by day, satisfactions of the past which allow us to say yesterday was pleasant or yesterday was not pleasant. It is past and we are planning and invested in experiences tomorrow being satisfactory and pleasant and make our plans accordingly. And ordinary lives are planned out in this way, planning for satisfactions, hoping to experience presently well-being, the plans are made in that way. In just this way, we would anticipate subsequent lives planning in a similar way. Boys, 
这个是我们的自然的话,我们的自然的话,我们的自然的话,我们的自然的话,我们的自然的话,我们的自然的话,我们的自然的话,我们的自然的话,我们的自然的话,我们的自然的话,我们的自然的话,我们的自然的话,我
and the method of the practice, we come to the stages and the levels of practice described by vehicles that are greater and lesser, by scopes of the Dharma suited to individuals of greatest capacity or lesser capacity. All of these adapted to the variety of individual capacities. Thus then, the availability of the foundation vehicle of Dharma, of the Mahayana vehicle of Dharma, within the Mahayana too, the causal vehicle and the resultant vehicle. The causal vehicle of the perfections, the resultant vehicles of the Mandrayana. The resultant vehicle, the Mandrayana, involving the utilization of this present body in one lifetime to realize the ultimate objective and outlining the stages in the practice accordingly. This, the resultant vehicle of the Mandrayana. And two, eon by eon, progress made over the course of many eons, this, the causal vehicle of the Mahayana, also available. <laughs> The Anyway, Toward the realization of the ultimate objective, there are many stopping points along the way, as though making partial progress and halting. For instance, the elimination of personal pain, the realization of a limited form of pacification and peace, while not ultimate pacification and peace, a limited form of it, a, li a limited form of realization of the liberated state, state of liberation, is realized as something of a halfway point in the course of realizing the ultimate objective. So we have an outline of the series of partial progress, such as liberation from the disastrous lower realms. 
liberation from the pain of samsara generally. And then this outline, it is an outline for individuals of lesser capacity. It is the dharma of lesser scope. It is providing conditions supportive for such individuals through such dharma. Well, <laughs> And the progress outlined in this way is progress which reflects the capacities of different kinds of individuals, just as there are travelers all intending to travel to the same destination. But one traveler is capable of departing and immediately arriving, moving quickly. And another sets off, but then has to rest along the way periodically. And then another sets out and repeatedly loses their way. All have in mind the same destination, but proceed differently. And the ultimate goal is omniscient awakening. That first event of identifying whether there is such an ultimate state we say there is such an ultimate state. It is bodhi, it is omniscient, buddhahood, and we identify it. Having identified it, then you consider how is it achieved. It is achieved variously according to the different capacities, abilities among individuals. Those that may realize Omniscient Buddhahood through one body in one lifetime are those individuals of most sensitive intelligence. Those that require several lifetimes are of a middling sensitivity of intelligence. And then those who take the long route requiring many eons of progress are those of least intelligence. Oh, yeah. Um, Oh, that is That individual of most sensitive intelligence, best intelligence, who takes the responsibility for realizing the ultimate goal in one lifetime and realizes it is what sort of individual necessarily a human being constituted of the six elements, no other form of being has the capacity. 
and taking a jay come to take a little line yet, sure, said his mother. That's a good sugar of the sugi, this sula yard, this suit, call your resident to get a chase on her. That the age come to the Tana Mazadina, you joke about the dance. On board rugby, then San Jog, and age come to the big little table to top your tea. And then that's an actual now come by your dinner, then I'll come at the yard degree. That do be enough, such a true to a Chinese yogi. Just who is such an individual constituted of six elements with the human biological endowment? Where are such individuals? Who are such individuals? All gathered here are just such individuals they are outside as well but especially here any who intend to realize the ultimate objective have the prerequisites in their physical endowment already oh yeah therefore those with the capacity to practice are those with the prerequisites in place, such as we here. This then identifies for us the individual of greatest sensitivity, greatest endowment. Now to introduce the individual of a middling capacity, they to share the human body, but rather than in a single lifetime, realizing the result, they repeatedly reacquire a physical, human physical endowment. And again, by reacquiring the, the human physical endowment, make their progress. <laughs> As for the individual of least capacity, they proceed most slowly, straining with each step, exerting themselves over a long period. However much is required of them, that much time is required such that they are persistent and persisting make their progress over many eons. Oh,
in practices than there are dharmas of three scopes suited to the range of individuals, all with bodhi awakening as the shared goal, and all requiring the human endowment for the realization of bodhi, yet there being individuals of keenest ability who use their physical endowment in one lifetime to realize their goal and others requiring repeated rebirths for the realization of their goal and others requiring many eons, all nevertheless dependent upon the physical endowment of the human body or the heavenly body, that is the physical support of birth as heavenly being or human being. This indispensable to such practices. Therefore, the temporary experiences of satisfaction that go along with fortunate rebirths are part of the process of realizing the ultimate goal which depends upon a physical endowment as human being or heavenly being. Therefore, the pursuit of birth as heavenly being and human being in the fortunate realms is the purpose of the individual of least intelligence. For if that isn't realized, and one is born into a hell realm, there is no basis whatsoever, no support whatsoever for the realization of satisfaction and well-being. No basis there in the disaster of the hell realms. Therefore, the first objective is to secure liberation from the disastrous, unfortunate realms and to achieve birth as a heavenly being or human being, and then to rise through the practices of the individuals of middling intelligence and greatest intelligence. <laughs> When that physical support of heavenly and human rebirth is achieved, then temporary satisfaction and well-being too is achieved. But in addition to that, one goes on to realize the greatest form of well-being of all, the state of omniscient buddhahood, that being the greatest form but even too, along the way, a lesser form in the satisfaction of liberation, mere liberation from samsara. Oh, <laughs>
recognizing the disastrous hell realms to be painful, the individual of least intelligence aspires to liberation from those disastrous lower realms and to secure fortunate rebirth as human being or heavenly being. And this is the purpose of the individual of least intelligence as I have already characterized it. Now, furthermore, when that has been achieved and an individual recognizes nevertheless that as heavenly being or human being experiences are nevertheless painful and one must again find liberation from samsara generally in order to ever be liberated from pain entirely, this informs the renunciation of an individual, this renunciation when it leads to liberation from samsara generally is the realization of the objective of the individual of middling intelligence. This the limited form of liberation, personal liberation from pain and the achievement of personal satisfaction and only this and no more. A limited, a limited form of liberation. But when, in addition to this, one intends to establish others too in their well-being, to bestow upon others too well-being, and achieves this, then this is the realization of great liberation. Such an outline of practices according to three kinds of individuals and now come to be known as the Dharma of three capacities is a contribution of Atisha who visited Tibet and introduced this this framework of practices for three individuals. Oh yeah. <laughs> It isn't the first instance of such a dharma. Illustrious Nagarjuna presented the same material but without characterizing it as dharma for three types of individuals. So, so Nagarjuna did observe that individual who realizes fortunate birth who then achieves definite 
supreme goodness, that individual with these then gradually in stages achieves the ultimate in excellence. And so here Nagarjuna presents a series of three, but without the language of Dharma for the three kinds of individuals. And it was so that in India there were many pundits who presented the material just this way, but without the language of Dharma for three kinds of individuals, Aryadeva and many other pundits presented these series in a practice for the realization of Bodhi awakening a presentation of the method and means for the realization of Bodhi without the language of Dharma for three kinds of individuals. But then with a Atija visiting Tibet and composing lamp on the path to enlightenment in lamp on the path to enlightenment are many approaches to methods for achieving liberation adapted to many kinds of individuals. And between the Kadamba and the Neo Kadamba, there are there is even more variety among stages in such a path to awakening. The Kadamba and Neo Kadamba, in their presentation of the stages of the path, will always take as foundational the three kinds of individuals and then develop the variety of paths accordingly. In the outline involving practices for three principal sorts of individuals, there has been a development of a whole class of literature of graded stages on the path to enlightenment. And as these are practiced, there are different types that have emerged 
in this tradition, the stages of the path concerned with the development of realization. The stages of the path concerned with the development through study, contemplation, and cultivation. The stages of the path that follow from study involved in the application of what one has learned. So there are stages of the path regarding practices for the development of realization, these naturally requiring meditation, therefore the diversity here. Oy, that's a good lamb with them, but the Gulet Kirig, the big one to Chen and Yams Lamb by Yina, and what Lamb's line, the Carilambo is good enough. I see it is this. She need in duty in a love with your singing in duty in Malabo Yina, Lamb your symbol, Gulet Kirig, somebody Nigmar, said that I'm wishing it is you called in it, the Malabo Yutasha, and I said, but the Congo with your resonance. in the stages of the path toward the development of realization, the first step and stage is guru devotion, failing to train in guru devo devotion. The next in the series for the realization, for the development of realization, the next events in that series will not arise. The starting point, therefore, guru devotion. Oh, yeah, talk about you like Kiva. Kiva, Tia, Muru to Kiva, Langi Petty. Can't do it. Your name is important to talk about you like Kiva, the Gekanga. She needed to rally great. She needed to cause it them a Sanga Yenayan, talk about Kiva, Muru to Kiva. Everybody gets a son, you good. She needed to do my way, not talk about. For the development of realization and for the development of realization to proceed swiftly one necessarily begins through proper reliance on the spiritual mentor, the guru devotion. It is the first stage in the series of practices for the development of realization that one begins in a proper form of reliance upon the spiritual mentor so that they may afterward develop realization. Here then, this, the stages for the development of realization, beginning with proper reliance on the spiritual mentor. Oh, yeah. you like you Proper spiritual, proper reliance on the spiritual mentor, the first step to the development of realization. When that, the cause, 
and means to the first development of realization occurs, then the path that follows after that begins itself with the contemplation of the leisures and endowments of the human rebirth. And this is followed by contemplation of impermanence and imminent death and karmic causality. Therefore, these contemplation of the leisures and endowments, impermanence and impending death, refuge and karmic causality are topics within the Dharma for individuals of lesser scope. The topics for individuals of middling intelligence are the four truths of the noble ones for reversing re-entry into samsara as well as pratityat samatpada dependent orig origination, these among the topics for individuals of middling intelligence. Oh, yes. That's why we have to do this. And then that's what we have to do. And then that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. So, that's what we have to do. And then we have to do this. 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 Followed by love, compassion, the development of the awakening mind of bodhicitta, the practice of exchanging and equalizing self and others, the sevenfold oral instruction, tradition, these topics within the Dharma of greatest scope for individual of greatest intelligence. Oh, then if one reviews stages in this progressive way, beginning with practices for those of least capacity, including practices of those with greater capacity and the practices of those of greatest capacity here, the review of the stages of the path. So the review meditation is the survey of the series of practices through the Dharma of three scopes in this order called to mind and reviewed and is a form of meditation. And then the application and instantiation of the path in practice, the foundational attitude is a recognition of karma causality as foundational. That satisfaction is a consequence of virtue and dissatisfaction the consequence of non-virtue. This is taken as foundational to all daily activities and need to be taken as basis of all daily activities. And this is the application of 
the beginning of the path with karmic causality as the foundation. to complete one's development and mental concentration, samadhi, to realize samatha and vipassana, serenity and special insight, the intention must be adjusted. It is observed that intention is the very gateway to the cultivation of multi of meditation the intention is the doorway to the meditation and the doorway to the application of practice is karmic causality and the doorway to the review meditation which reviews the path is that first review of the eight leisures and the ten endowments of the human birth and the doorway to the development of realization and the doorway to the rapid development of realization is proper reliance upon the spiritual mentor here you see then the outlines of stages of these paths. Oh yeah, that's just to be that shargon majan. Bom majan, but yamle majan and is a kawarwa, yamle chinata, yamle chagas in bottle to you, yamle chitangas in bottle to this sungu or esomus. It's a different matter entirely if one doesn't review the path in a review meditation at all and does not meditate at all, and does not practice at all. But when one does, then these are the outlines of the path for one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Lama and <laughs> 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 Thus, that path for individual of least intelligence involves first the reflection upon impermanence and impending death. This topic, our concern here, that in this life, yet we aren't 
we haven't yet recognized impermanence and impending death sufficiently that we haven't characterized by Jie Kung Tang in their proverbs in this way. 20 years dharma did not occur to me. Then in the next 20 years, again and again, I thought I must practice dharma. There 40 years have passed. Then in the next 20 years, I spent my time lamenting, oh, it's too late. Now 60 years. And then, in the end, for 20 years, I lamented, oh, I didn't practice at all. And in this way, the entire life was squandered. And so the guidance found here, and when the final verse is, and in the end I'm left empty-handed, and this is my life story, it is the guidance that you will be stranded empty-handed with no virtues to your name, like the person who you will be stranded with no virtues to your name, yet you go on into a subsequent rebirth and you do so empty-handed with no virtues and you will not arrive in a destination where there is any prospect of any satisfaction. Oh yeah, that's all those that are around you. Ah, Kandar, didn't she know by Kewa Lynch? Didn't she do by Kewa Lynch, Kewa Lynch? When that is inevitable that we conduct ourselves in such a way that in the end, no matter our physical state, will or well or not, we are able to feel content with what we've done so that at that time we have that support for our satisfaction, this too, our other important objective. 
Voi vata, ma tu ti rimetti, 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 material so much as we've made general remarks now on the stages of the path. So this these have been general remarks regarding the stages of the path. And if that leaves any doubts, any uncertainties, we can address those in our Q&A. Mm -hmm. So you have a question, please. Ask the question. Which is the other? He said, No, he comes with it. Thank you, Geshe. No. It would be wonderful to get some advice on finding the right balance between having regret for wasted time, but still having um, rejoicing in what positive things we have done in our Dharma practice. Um, to be how to be clear headed about um, honesty about when we're wasting our time versus um, uh, you know becoming too negative uh, in 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 saying in feeling that we wasted too much time. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, the Nigisi gear and the Lavjiki Naruti, Chidan, the Sosogi, and the Gyosim, and the Kayore, and the Jesu Yiran, and the Che, and the Rebe, Jawayan, and the Che Yore, and the Nika Che Yore, that the Nika the Chanyo over the Nizogroa, and the Chikla Hungo Hungu Yomare, Nika Chanyo Chanyova Zogroa, and he. And the Young, young, son of Donna, and a Gyosim, K. Gyobe, and a David Jawa Denzola, Donan, Tegi Marwa, Jason, Candis, and a Kiomola, Candis Shaw. Gyosim, Kedi, Gyoba Chedi, that you want on the Kedi, Chagger, the age of Thomas. But first of all, the practice of Regret is among virtuous practices one of the finest virtuous practices. And that's for the reason that for the application of any antidote power, no antidote power is applied until there is regret. And to illustrate this, the illustration often given is of a person who has involuntarily swallowed poison. They must realize they've swallowed poison in order to purge themselves until there's a realization that they've swallowed a poison. The purging of the poison doesn't begin. Awesome. 
but with the recognition of the in the swallowing of the poison, then the purging of it begins, and the the pursuit of some treatment and protection from the consequences begin. Oh, yeah, that's very good. Now, see, that language le norovati language thamu mashena. Oh, the the chilmaro or shilagat the kozongu marwas. See that that language le norovati shena. Ani norsan chayi lapsan chengi rwas or. And so it is that until one recognizes that their conduct has been problematic, there's no forceful application or intention to correct those actions. But recognizing one's mistake, then afterwards the impulse to correct them begins. Yeah. Just as it is for any person responsible for, for some criminal activity, they must be introduced to the criminality of the activity so that they may recognize how afterward they may correct their actions so that they are no longer criminal. In the same way, we must identify what are non-virtuous actions so that seen as non-virtuous actions, afterward one may pursue what is virtuous. Oh, ま、ちらんちょっと、それちきでた、それちきで、三部ちゃんちゃんちゃんなせだった、三部ちゃんちゃんちゃんなたやばろだった、今度三部ちゃんちゃんちとこぐよるわ。え、三部ちゃんち
धम्मा के बचाया यहाँ हाँ ये था ना क्यों मत क्यों मत बचेगा तीन से कोई क्यों ठूक रहा था मिमाला And that more ordinary worldly perspective applies, for instance, to, to ministers, prime ministers, officers who are responsible for governance. For instance, and you can't have one who is excessively benevolent. They might be so benevolent that they don't protect the population and can govern effectively, but they can't be excessively malicious either. In that case, they wouldn't protect. The people, and so there a balance is to be found of some kind. But in the case of practice, the response is informed differently. Some of them they want to turn the love in them. How much you put with it? Has a chamcha, and then you call it so a chetana, pugu music, that tiny toy and yanga dua. Yeah, has a chutana, pugu magacha and yanga dinner. She called young. How much you put with your dana in my name? And you see, it's also different in the case of parenting. A father can be too excessively gentle and without any discipline that the child might, might err in some way. <laughs> become excessive in some way. Thus, for the nurturing of a child, there must too be a balance, not too gentle, not too strict. But as for practice, one takes upon themselves every fault and offers to others everything that is good. Therefore, one in the pursuit of consistent virtuousness accepts every fault and, and gives to all others all that is good. So are there others? There are no others, then we'll uh, there are no questions, so then that leaves us with a couple of minutes, and in that time we will meditate on the generation stage of pain. Now we will meditate so as to be able to recall pain for where there's no recollection of pain, then there can be no informed regret. regret. Our, our teachers would say that unless you recall pain, you experience no pleasure. Yeah. 
in order to identify and recognize contentment, one must be aware of pain. And the process is to recall personal pain and then to identify the pains of others according to that. In the meditation, the recognition is of pain as painful and undesirable for oneself per personally. And then this recognition is shifted to include all others who are identical in experiencing pain experiencing great agonizing pain, death, and the like. And were it me in their place, would I be able to tolerate such pain? The experience of the preta and hell beings is less accessible to us, less occurs to us, less easily, but more easily can we relate to the pain experienced, experienced by animals in the animal realm, which we see clearly and hero In the animal realm, there are single individuals who are able to inflict harm and take the lives of many hundreds of other animals. And then there are other others who pile on in the hundreds to take the life of another single animal and inflict great pain on that single animal. We see very clearly the pain experienced among animals. The exercise is to imagine ourselves in their place and consider whether we could bear such pain and recognize that their pain and recognize their pain and recognize zing it confronted in the meditation. Oh, 
ਚਦਾ ਦਿੱਲੀ ਦੀ ਸਪਰਜੀ ਤੋਂ ਨਾਲ ਨਾਲ ਸੁਬੇ ਕੇ ਜਮੇ ਨਾਲ ਦਾ ਅਨੇ ਤੁੰਗੋ ਤੁੰਗੇ ਸਾਂ ਨੀ ਜਮੇ ਚੋਰਾ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਵਾਰ ਸੀ ਦਾ ਇਲੇ ਆ ਦੁੰਗੇ ਥਾਨੇ ਕੀ ਜਮੇ ਸੀ ਨੀ ਦੀ ਤਾਲ ਵੇ ਨੇ ਦੁੰਗੇ ਕੋ ਦੀ ਜਮਾ ਸ਼ੇਂ ਕੀ ਤੁੰਗੇ ਦੀ ਰੰਗ ਸਮ ਨਾ ਛੇ ਕਿ ਛੇ ਬੋਲ ਤੇ ਨੇ ਤੁੰਗੇ ਦੀ ਰੰਗ ਨਿਓ ਆਈ ਨਾ ਅਨੇ ਤੁੰਗੇ ਖਜ਼ੇ ਤੁਸ ਕਾਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਅਨੇ ਸੋ ਰੰਗ ਸੋ ਸਾਰੇ ਸੋ ਸਮਾਰ ਅਨੇ ਮਾਸੇ ਦਾ ਫੋ ਸ਼ੇਂ ਦੇ ਸੋ ਕੋ ਮਾਰੇ ਅਨੇ ਤੇਲਾ ਆਕਾ ਤੇਲੇ ਚੋ ਬੱਚੇ ਕੋ ਤੋ ਸਮ ਨੇ ਨੀ ਇੰਜੀ ਕੋ ਮੈ ਬਹੁਤ ਦੇਖ ਸਮ ਤਾਂ ਮੇ ਬੱਚੇ ਕੋ ਰਹਿ ਸੋਂ then each reflects upon what one sees in the pain experienced by animals it is apparent that they face tremendous hardship imagine yourself meeting such hardship what would it be like to meet the hardship which animals meet and this the recollection of the pain experienced by animals and then taking on that pain experienced by others informs the practice of the paramitas of patience of energetic discipline it is the exercise in taking on the pain of others by first recalling it and then having taken it on imagining whether one could bear it and realizing that it is unbearable pain and it is unbearable pain that they face then with that recognition feeling for them compassion in meditating in compassion hoy thanks to so many what has in the sanjay kandel ni na mi kandel sanjay dunge sanjay mango ke chik sare pe chik so che pe dunge na samata na digri chik mango so che pe sanjay dang na digri chinju ki chimbo ਅਨੇ ਸੋ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਤੁਮੇ ਨੇ ਸਮਤਾ ਨਾ ਜਿਗਰੇ ਛਿੰਬੂ ਕੋ ਛਿੰਜੂ ਅਨੇ ਸੋ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਤੁਮੇ ਨੇ ਸਮਤਾ ਨਾ ਜਿਗਰੇ ਸੋ ਸੋ ਦੋ ਸੇ ਮੈਂ ਘਰ ਛੜ ਕੇ ਦੇਖੇ ਕਾ ਮਾਜੀ ਕੋ ਦੀ ਜੇ ਸੋ ਸੋ ਨਾਉ ਬ੍ਰਿੰਗਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਮਾਈਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਐਵਰ ਵਰਜ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਦਾ ਪੇਨ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸਡ ਇਨ ਐਨੀਮਲਸ ਥੈਟ ਕਮਸ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਨੈਚੁਰਲੀ ਵਦਰ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਦੀ ਦਾ ਮੈਨੀ ਐਨੀਮਲਸ ਫਾਲਿੰਗ upon another single animal and taking its life or one single animal able to take the lives of many other many animals or it is the big inflicting pain upon the small or the small able to inflict pain upon the large whatever the case bring to mind such an event and meditate upon it now wait one minute yeah <clears throat> Yeah. inhale and hold the inhalation and contemplate
This is one part of the exercise of tolerance when confronting <clears throat> this is an instance of taking on the pain of others. To add to these within the tradition of mind training, you'll find other exercises. Allow us to conclude here and recite our closing prayers. <laughs> Lume <laughs> Jo <laughs> From my two collections, vast the space that I have amassed from working with Everett at this practice for a great length of time. May I become a chief with love for all those who with my with the mind is guided towards. Even if I do not reach this state, may I be held in your loving compassion for all my lives, my shit. May I find the best of the paths of the complete teachings, and may I please all the Buddhas by practicing. Using skillful means drawn by the strong force of compassion, may I clear the darkness from the minds of all beings with the points of the path as I have discerned them. May I hold with this teaching for a very long time. With my heart going out with great compassion, in whatever direction the most precious teaching that not yet spread or once spread have declined, may I offer this treasure of happiness to it all sentient beings. May the minds of those who wish for liberated liberated and the Buddha deeds be nourished for a long time by following the complete graduated path to enlightenment and the wondrous virtuous conduct of the Buddhas and their sons. May all humans and non-human beings that eliminate adversity make things conducive for practicing the excellent path. Never be parted in any of their lives from the purest path raised by the Buddhas. Whenever someone makes effort to act in accordance with the sinful Mahayana virtuous practices, may he always be protected by the mighty one, and may oceans of prosperity spread everywhere. <laughs> Kevanya <laughs> <laughs>
I dedicate whatever virtues I've ever collected for the benefit of the teachings and of sentient beings, and in particular for the essential teachings of Venerable Lozan Jaffa that shines forever. In the land the circle by snowy mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful sinners, it's in the gospel. Please remain until cyclic existence is ended. Just as the brave Manjushri and Samantabhatra do, realize things as they are, also I dedicate all these merits in the best way that I may follow their perfect example. I dedicate all these roots to virtue with the dedication praise as the best by the victorious Duskan ones of the three times, so that I might perform the noble Bodhisattva's deeds. May the supreme jewel of the Jita that is not arisen or rising grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. Thank you all. It's the 15th of the month. And the outside enjoy a meal together. <clears throat> That's it, isn't it? Okay.